my name is Brendan Reagan and I work for Exa Mountain Guides. I'm going to go over what you need on your backcountry skiing packing list to ski with us during the winter months. So what I have here is I have everything that's on the packing list that you have that I've taken out of my closet and I brought it here. I'm, I'm going to go over it piece by piece uh, just to give you an idea where to start. What you see here is what I would bring that's on the gear list for you to go skiing with Exa Mountain Guides in Grant Teton National Park. There are many similar or equivalent to items here. I will touch on some brand names to give you an idea of where you, so you can start searching somewhere to look for similar or equivalent to items. Some of the first things on the list that Exum can provide for you, but if you want to bring your own so you can learn how to use them and get used to them, that's great, is an avalanche rescue shovel. This is an essential item. We can provide this to you free of charge, but if you want to bring your own so you can learn how to put it together and how to use it, that's fine. An avalanche probe, um, once again, required item. We can provide this for you if you want to bring your own and learn how to use it, that's great. And the same goes, for a avalanche rescue transceiver, mandatory item. We will teach you how to use this, but once again, bring your own, learn how to use it. So if you wanna go on in your backcountry skiing career and do more, you understand how to use your equipment. So uh, we have to figure out how we're gonna carry all of this stuff. So ski packs become really important. So something in the range of like a 32 liter ski pack, which you see here, Alpha SK32. Um, it's a little bit small for big days of backcountry skiing, so I will go with the Rush SK32 here from Arteryx. It's really uh, helpful in your backcountry ski pack to have a dedicated pocket that all of your avalanche rescue tools can go into. Um, it's also really important if you're one that likes to ski with a backcountry skiing helmet or a ski helmet, it's really important to have a really nice way to fasten it onto your ski pack. So we can provide ski packs for you. You need to let the office know if that's something that we need to provide for you, including that with beacon, shovel, and probe. Let's talk about some of the things that we're gonna wear when we're out there backcountry skiing in the park. One of the first things that's really important is a waterproof breathable shell. It must be waterproof. Um, Gore-Tex shells are really nice out there. This is the Rush jacket from Arteryx. It's a really lightweight backcountry ski jacket. It is Gore-Tex. You can see that it is seam taped on the inside to be waterproof. Um, it's, it's oversized, it'll fit over all your layers, it'll give you a lot of space for movement while you're skiing, but a waterproof breathable jacket uh, is mandatory when you're skiing with us. On our bottoms, a couple different options that we might work with there, depending on how you run temperature-wise. I've brought a heavier weight pair of really lightweight fleece long underwear that I'll wear, base layer that I'll wear on a colder day. And then here is a little bit lighter weight, three quarter length long underwear that doesn't go down into my ski socks or my boots, which I like a lot also, that I'll wear on warmer days. Now, still down there on the bottom layers, we need to look at what kind of pants we're gonna have on. Um, this is a really nice waterproof soft shell pant from Arteryx called the Procline. FL pant. I wore this pant every day last year. It was my go-to pant. Um, it's got a normal belt on it that's built in. It has uh, these quarter length side zips here. So this is the Proton FL pant from Arteryx. It's a waterproof soft shell pant that's great for almost all winter days. It has a pocket that you can put your phone in or your beacon in here with a clip. Um, it is important to note that if you do get a soft shell pant for backcountry skiing, that it is on the burlier side of soft shell pants. Uh, so it does keep you warm when you're out there. The other option would be a full Gore-Tex pant like this Rush FL pant. This one's a little bit higher. It has suspenders here to help the pants stay up, but it's also full Gore-Tex, so it's waterproof, it's fully breathable. The seams are taped on the inside. As you can see, Procline FL pant and the Rush LT pant. Just to be noted, there are similar or equivalent to pants like this um, in the marketplace. This is just give you an idea of where to start looking for backcountry ski pants to come out and ski with Exum. Uh, one of the next layers that I'm gonna put on my body is gonna be some sort of base layer. Uh, it's most likely gonna have a hood. So on the colder days, I'll still go with a sun hoodie style base layer here that has a hood that'll fit over my baseball hat, which I tour in most of the time. Um, but as you could, this one, if you were able to feel it, it'd be a little bit heavier. And then as we get toward the spring days, or if I run really hot, 
uh, I would go with like this Cormac Sun hoodie here that's still lightweight but still has the hood. We'll touch on this a little bit more later um, because I like to ski tour with a baseball hat on most of the time. Uh, it's really nice to have a hood that pulls up to block some of the cold air uh, from coming in and then the brim keeps the snow and the sun out of my face. Then I look at what my next layer is. Uh, this is the Squamish hoodie from Arterix. It's a really nice lightweight windskin. So if you think it might be sunny and you might be taking a lot of layers off, this works really well over your base layer. Uh, that's the Squamish hoodie. Once again, there are a lot of products in that category that are similar or equivalent to that. Then on top of the Squamish, I'll be looking at a breathable soft shell, uh, like an active layer that I can ski tour in, that I can hike in, uh, something that's gonna keep me warm but still breathe really well. Here, I've been using the Proton FL this last winter. Uh, really liked it a lot. But once again, there are similar or equivalent to products out there. It's really light, it's really packable quite breathable. One item that's essential that you'll need that even on day trips I always take with me into the backcountry is a headlamp. Uh, you can go with uh, the Petzl ones uh, that are rechargeable. Uh, that's what I use. The, once I charge it, it lasts a long time. I barely turn it on in the winter. It's basically for emergencies if we have to come back as we're losing light or if you're doing an alpine start for a big backcountry skiing day. You can go with a smaller one or a bigger one. They're both going to be sufficient, um, but they are the rechargeable ones, which I like. Now, as far as taking care of my hands, uh, some days I take two to three pairs of gloves. It's all going to depend on the temperature. I'm going to be looking for something that's going to be a little bit lighter weight on the up. This is a nice mid-weight glove uh, from Black Diamond. But then on a colder day, I'll be looking at something like this Fission glove from Arterix. It's really nice. It fits really well, but it's Gore-Tex, it's warm, it's not cotton. It's gonna keep my hands warm. If I feel like it's gonna be an extra cold day or you think you have extra cold hands, I would even go with a third set of gloves that's even bigger, something that might even have a big time removable liner uh, to put in here. So gloves are really important, non-cotton of course. Uh, it's nice to have a good comfortable fitting glove so you can hold your ski poles really well. Um, as far as I, how I take care of my eyes, uh, dark sunglasses are something that's really important to me when I'm out there. I look at something like this Guide's Choice Extra Large from Smith that fits on my face and then covers all the spots to keep all the sun out uh, as I'm ski touring up. And then on most days, I'll be wearing a pair of goggles uh, when I ski down. So I bring this pair of goggles from Avalon 7 here in Jackson um, that has this really cool Exum strap on it. But what I like about these Avalon 7 goggles is I can pop one lens off. I can put another lens on depending on the lighting conditions for the day, or if for some reason one of them gets wet, I have a backup. Having a really good pair of goggles in the backcountry is super important, and this can't be overlooked. But just like with the sunglasses and the goggles, there are plenty of other items out there that are similar to that. This is just what I have in my kit that I go out in the mountains with. Um, a couple things to help take care of your skin. You wanna bring sunscreen, and you definitely wanna bring lip balm. How much sunscreen to me is important. Like I used, I like to have some smaller containers so they don't weigh very much um, so that I can just keep refilling these small containers as I go and I don't have to carry too much weight in sunscreen. Another version of a small container there and then a nice small uh, lip balm is really important so I don't burn my lips. Um, one thing that your guide may discuss with you or will discuss with you in the morning is satellite communication device. Uh, you don't have to have your own guide will provide something for you to use in case of emergency and they will teach you how to use it. This is the Garmin inReach Mini. This is my personal choice of what I use for satellite devices. But once again, this is a guide specific device and this will be discussed with you by your guide. Okay, another extremely important piece of gear in my opinion is the over puffy or your big puffy jacket for the really cold, deep winter months in the Tetons. You will need something with a hood that's really warm, but still packs down really small. This is the Nuclei SV from Arterix. Um, there's a lot of products in this category. This is what I choose uh, based on its compressibility and its weight and uh, how warm it keeps me in the winter. You can stuff it into its own pocket and then put it in the pack. But you want this big, you want it oversized. It'll come on, it stops. It'll come on when it's snowing really hard. And then it's nice if you have a little stuff sack, you can put it in when you put it back in your backpack.
Winter hat is also extremely important when you're with us. So once I take off my baseball hat uh, that I'm ski touring up in, I'm gonna put a winter hat on for the ski down and put my goggles over it. Uh, if you want something more styly, these are certainly acceptable. This is an all wool hat from Crown Cap that I like to wear in the winter because it doubles as my baseball hat and as my winter hat and my Avalon 7 goggles still fit underneath there. This is a lighter weight version of a, the heavy, this is the Nuclei FL. This would almost be acceptable on some warmer days ski touring with us, but it's just a little bit too light for the big days. But if you're doing some spring missions or you do run really hot or want to bring two puffies, this would be an alternative to the Nuclei SV. Ski socks, obviously really important to find a really good pair of ski socks that fit with your boot. Cotton is not acceptable, so you're going to find something merino wool or you're going to find something synthetic like these two pairs of socks here. Um, sock preference is going to totally depend on your ski boot fit, but it's nice to have a couple pairs of socks when you come here. As we were talking a little bit about uh, sun protection, uh, once again, I wear baseball hats touring even in the deep winter. I just pull my hood up over them or I wear this uh, heavier weight hat here. So we have hats here that you could buy in our retail store. Food is something that's very personal to people. So we want to talk about making sure you bring enough healthy snacks with enough healthy calories for the day of ski touring. But as far as water goes, uh, we're a little bit more particular. We want to make sure you're carrying at least two liters of water on a normal backcountry ski day. One hard bottle is really good. You could put electrolytes in here or maybe a hot drink or this, this could also be a thermos, but it needs to be hard, non-breakable reliable lid, and then a screw top. And then one of my favorite things to do in the winter is I will use a one liter collapsible wa water bottle just for water. It'll be the first thing I drink during the day. And then once it's empty, I can just roll this thing that up, put the cap back on, and I just saved all that space in my backpack, which can be super helpful for my big puffy as the day goes on, cramming it in and out. Um, an optional piece of gear for backcountry skiing is a backcountry skiing type helmet. This is the Scott Kuwar helmet. It's really lightweight. It doesn't have a lot of insulation, so it's not going to get too hot if you're wearing it on the way up. And it fits really nice over uh, a hat. Once again, optional equipment here. If this is something you like and you want to bring a ski helmet, I would look into finding one, a helmet like this Scott one that's nice and lightweight and not too hot. Uh, definitely in the winter, I'm still way into wearing neck gaiters or buffs. Um, I put it on in the morning. I can pull it up over my face. I can pull it most of the way up the back of my head to add an extra layer of protection underneath my baseball hat. And then I can pull my hood over it uh, to increase that. And then of course it keeps the wind and the sun uh, and blowing snow and stuff like that out of my face and keeps me more comfortable. So I really don't leave the house in the morning and the winter without putting on some sort of neck gaiter or buff. Okay, I'm gonna touch on some of the really hard goods that are really important for your trip here and a few things that get overlooked a good bit. Um, so you're gonna need a pair of skis with AT touring bindings on them to ski with us in the Tetons. Generally these days, uh, the AT skiing binding is gonna have a front toe piece that's gonna have two pins that's gonna clamp down on your boot. And then it's gonna have a heel piece here in the back that when you're going uphill, you will be able to rotate it and your boot will fit right in. You can lock the toe and then you can tour up the mountain here. Your touring boot should have a lock mechanism in the back for uphill and downhill for ski mode and for touring mode to help with the flex in the front along with this here. What boot I have here, this is the Hoji 130 from Dinafit. This is the boot that I choose. There are many other boots out there in this category that you can search out. Boot fit particular to your foot is really important. So make sure you try on some boots or you find a boot that works for you. After the boots, another really important piece of gear you're gonna want when you come here is a really good pair of backcountry touring skis. That ski is generally lighter weight than a ski you would use at the resort or village or at your ski area. And this ski is gonna have particular binding. It's gonna have a toe piece. It's gonna have a pin and it's gonna have a heel piece that fits in your boot. This particular ski that I used most of the time last year, this is the forefront Hoji with the four lock 
system for the skins here in the tail. The ski is 184 in length and 112 in width. I, th I think this is a great all around ski for the Tetons in the midwinter. Once again, this is the Forefront Hoji in a 184, 112. Uh, there are many skis in this category that are similar and equivalent to this. This, just, this Hoji ski just happens to be my preferred ski for the daily driver for the Tetons. A uh, couple reasons, one, I think it's pretty light too. There's this really interesting skin system called the forelock that creates a much smaller skin than you would normally carry. So you lose a lot of weight here. This forelock hole here is where the skin tail goes in. So I save weight there and it doesn't pop off the tail as much. So uh, that being said, there's a lot of great backcountry skis out there. Uh, your guide can help you pick the right one or the shop you rent from can. But it's really important to make sure the boot fits in the ski, the ski's fitted properly. And it's really it's also extremely important to make sure even if they're your own skins or skins from the shop, that they fit the ski that you have and that all of the equipment is in totally good working order. One of the last pieces of gear in that category you're gonna need is a pair of telescoping ski poles. I like to have them shorter when I ski down and then as I'm touring up, I might find a more comfortable length so I can extend this pole and make it more suitable to where my arm sits uh, next to me. So collapsible poles are important. You can usually rent all of these things at a shop like Teton Mountaineering in Jackson uh, to get what you need uh, to ski with us. But it's really important if you bring this stuff from home, you have it tuned, you know the skins fit, and that all this stuff fits together. Once again, this is what I bring on a regular backcountry skiing day that's on the gear list that you have for Megzum. There's a lot of stuff that are similar or equivalent to the products here. This is just what I happen to like the most when I'm out there. In closing, I just want to thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, my name is Brendan Reagan from Exit Mountain Guides, and we hope to see you in the Teton soon.